Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Right, let's dig in. Um, this shader came about because I thought the other day, instead of creating a whole bunch of different gemstone shaders, that we could actually create one that we could manipulate and change um, to represent all sorts of different gemstones. So I'm in the shading tab. I will enable viewport shading. I've got three different gemstones, all with the same material applied at the moment, but I'll show you later how to change individual um, gemstones within your scene. Now we don't need the principal shader, so I'm going to delete that. Then I'm going to get a glass shader and a mix shader. And an add shader. Now the add shader is going to go into the bottom slot of the mix shader. Mix shader is going to go into the material output. And the glass shader is going to go into the add shader. Now we've got much more to add, but for now, uh, that's kind of giving us a start. Now we're going to add three more glass shaders. So actually I'm just going to duplicate this one. So you press Shift D to duplicate. I then need two math nodes, one up here and one down here. I need another add shader because we need to basically add all these together. So the top two will go into this one. And then the third one, uh, oh, actually, silly me. So we need one for that, one for that, and I need another one. So add, 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 mix. Now that's gone crazy because these are all white at the moment. So we're going to change this one to pure red, change it to GGX. Same with the others. Change this middle one to green. So full saturation and 0.335, I think, will give us the green we want. Yeah, that should be about right. Full saturation on the bottom one and 0.6675 for the blue. Now, we need to basically crack these apart. So we're going to use these math shaders. The top one should be set to subtract and the bottom one to add. And they're both going to get plugged into the index of refraction value. This one we don't connect to anything just yet. First, we need to add two value nodes. Now, one's going to be index of refraction and one's going to be dispersion. So to change their names, we can actually go into the node control here by pressing N and then just renaming them. So you can see that's now called dispersion and this top one I will call index of refraction or IOR. Now that's cool as it is. Um, anyway, so this index of refraction gets plugged into the top slot of both and the dispersion into the bottom slot of both math nodes. We're also going to take the index of refraction into the glass shader here and the glass shader here. So basically we only have to change this value once rather than remembering to change it in four different nodes. Now I'll set the diamond index of refraction which is 2.410. And if you ever want to know what an index of ref refraction is for a particular gemstone, just look it up on the internet. It's, uh, it's all out there, the information. 
Now the dispersion value for diamonds is 0 0.044. And you can see how that's now sort of spread the colors and dispersed the colors. Now to control the color of the glass itself, we're gonna add an RGB. Now I could actually just change it here, but because I'm gonna be grouping these and controlling through a group, I wanted this separate um, color control. So we've got everything set up. Now the mix shader, I need to control with some form of mask. So I am going to add a light path. Now I think I've got this right. Shader, blue. Second shader. The glass. Add shader, mix shader. I think I've got one too many shaders. So we've got green, red, blue going into there. Well, oh, I forgot to change this one as well. Okay, yes. So this add shader goes into the bottom slot of the mix and the glass goes into the top slot. There we go. Apologies for that. Anyway, for this mix shader, we're gonna take is camera ray from the light path and plug that into the factor. Now that's the entire setup arranged, but like I said, we're gonna control this through a node group. So select everything here and then press Control G. Come out of that and you'll see what we've got here. So we've got the index of refraction control, we've got the dispersion control, the color control, and then everything's being piped through this node group. So it makes it much tidier. Now these are all over the place at the moment. So we're gonna go back into the node group, click on the group tab and shift things around a bit. So I'm going to put the index of refraction at the top. Same for this one. And leave the color at the bottom. Come out of the group and there you go. See, all nice and tidy. Now, as I said, I've got them all set to the same color at the moment. So if I wanted to do different gemstones in the same scene, what I can do is just come up here to where it says new material with the two little watsits. Click on it and it's now attached a 001 to the um, color. Now, I don't know what um, object I've got selected. So let's turn on these. Okay, so I've got the little one selected at the moment. And let's do a different one. So index of refraction differs from gemstone to gemstone and so does the dispersion. So you can always look those up online and find the most appropriate. And we'll do the same again here. I'm actually just making these up, by the way, um, but you can look up the appropriate values online. So there we've got maybe a sapphire, a ruby, and a diamond. Now, there's a debate really over whether you use tons of light paths and tons of samples for sort of glass and transparency. Yes, you can do that, but I'm gonna keep the usual 500 samples and low light paths, but I'm gonna enable denoising. And hopefully that will give me a nice enough result that I don't have to overload my processor. So let's send it to render and see what we get. Okay, there we go. It took around 50 seconds and I'm quite pleased with that result. I mean, it depends how big you're going to use this picture, what you're using it for and, and all the rest of it. But there you go. It's a nice, easy way of using or reusing that node group and creating all sorts of different gemstones within the same scene. So I hope you found this useful and will give the video a thumbs up before you leave today. And of course, subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank you.